Hi, my name is Sarah Nguyen. Uh, I'm an artist in multiple art forms. I paint, I spray paint, I'm a writer, um, primarily in poetry, spoken word. So right now, I'm really focused on both art forms, you know, my visual art and my writing. But I always say that my visual art, my painting definitely came first in my life, you know, because ever since I was a little kid, I was always into art and making things with my hands, or all the visual side of art. And then um, when I was around the time, I was like 13, 14, 12, 13, 14, 15, I was, every summer I would look for a summer program that could help me with my painting or my art. And then one summer when I was 15, I found this place, Artists for Humanity, which is a, um, you know, a organization that pays teens to paint and sell the artwork and all that stuff. So visual art definitely came first in my life. I always say painting's like my first love. And then when I was in high school around like 16, one of my mentors, he was a poet. His name is Jasley, and he started really cultivating more of my writing and my poetry and my performing. And since then, I've been just continuing it throughout college and post college. I've always like secretly had a desire to do to be an artist, you know. But growing up, it was never really encouraged, you know what I mean? Like art is always valid in society, and of course, my family they never took my art as seriously. So I kind of like muffled that desire for a long time. One of my favorite books also is The Alchemist. Um, if you haven't read it, you should definitely pick it up. It's a book about following your dreams, and I ever since I read that, you know, like in high school, and I've reread it a couple of times throughout college and now. And I really live my life firmly by that book, and that book really helps drive all my choices and decisions in life in terms of like going after what you want and being firm and faithful in your pursuit. The Alchemist definitely helps drive me in my creative career. But I think another um, point of motivation, the confirmation, was just like me looking around me and seeing that there's so many people who are doing it. You know what I mean? Like I see people, see artists who are doing the thing, and you know, I see like writers and poets who are out there or even musicians doing it, you know, and so when I see other people who are really motivated, it really like motivates me. And then I think at one point like I started thinking like, well damn, like, you know, we a lot of times in society or culture we idolize a lot of artists, you know. Like say if you idolize like Jenna Monet or if you idolize Kanye West even, you know. And I started thinking like, well, you know, Kanye's not gonna be Kanye forever. Well he will be, but Someone, you know, one day, some kid, you know, in his basement studio, that he's gonna come up and do and do the same thing, you know. And it really made me feel like sometimes when you idolize certain artists, they feel so far from you and so out of reach. But I really started thinking like, well, why, you know, he started somewhere too, or you know, that artist, you know, she started one day somewhere in her like room too, you know. And I feel like when I think of it in those terms, that you know, my my dream is just like a process and a step, and that everyone started somewhere. That really helps motivate me. Uh, when I was in college. Art actually wasn't, um, it actually wasn't my my number one priority as much as I wanted it to be. Uh, it actually always felt backseat to my student organizing on campus. I was really involved on campus with lots of different social issues and community issues, you know, from um, organizing conferences or, to, or like organizing rallies or, you know, mobilizing students on campus around different issues, right? I was really, I was highly involved student activist, so, and it was always a struggle even when I was in school. I really wanted to be more committed to my art, but I was also really committed to these causes in my community, and art at the time felt like such a personal thing. It felt really self-centered, it felt kind of selfish, so I was never really able to really pursue it. But I told myself that I would, you know, finish off my, like, finish off my, my duties as a student leader, as a student on campus, right? Cause I, you know, you only, you only call a student once. And then once I graduated college, that's when I really decided to launch my own creative career. And since then, um, I think that's the moment where I really started to hit it, looking at it from, you know, more of like a business angle and not just a, a hobby or a passion. You know, I started really strategizing and thinking about how to get myself more out there, how to better myself as an artist, how to promote myself, and just how to continue growing as an artist. And, and building, you know. The thing about being artists is that there's no application for it, there's no internship for it, there's really no form of to be an artist, you know, like, unless, if you want to be a doctor, there's a clear pathway for it. You got to take certain classes, take certain, get certain credentials, you know, spend certain, a certain amount of time in a hospital, whatever, but there really is no form for being an artist, which, which is like good and hard in a way. It's good because there's like, you, there are no rules, so you make your own rules, you know. 
it's hard because you have to be really self-disciplined and self-motivated. So you have to hold yourself accountable to schedule, right? So because there's no structure for how to become an artist, you really got to create your own structure and what works for you. And that's about being disciplined with your time and your work. So setting them out, you know, treat it like a real job, like an ill job, you know what I mean? Like, don't just get to it when you have time and when you feel like it. You really got to push yourself. If you really want to go far, you do have to create some type of structure to push yourself every day, you know? So what that's like, all right, so every day from like 10, to four, I'm working on this thing or this project, you know, and even when you don't feel like doing it, you have to do it because it's your job, right? And, and just not like letting it, like, not taking it so lightly. It's like if a friend hits you up for coffee at like 12 o'clock, say no, say I'm working, you know what I mean? So it's hard because, like I said, there's no formal for it and no one's really telling you how to do it. It's completely self driven, completely self um, self constructed, which is really cool because. I mean, there are a million ways to do it, you know what I mean? Just because one way work for someone else doesn't mean another way can't work for you. So for other artists who are out there trying to really get in their grind, like I really recommend just being very disciplined with yourself, um, being committed to your art every day. And maybe you're not creating every day, but you should always be practicing every day, you know what I mean? So you don't have to create a masterpiece every day, but at least be in the art form and practice, whether it's writing every day or drawing every day or painting every day, you know? Um, don't always just create to create something to, uh, to produce. Sometimes you're doing work just to develop yourself, you know? And then, I mean, that's one end, but then when you get more in depth with it as like, you know, as a career, you gotta think about really how to sustain yourself as an artist, you know? And a lot of times when we're passionate about something, we don't like thinking about money because we're doing it for the love of it, which is always true. But one thing I've been learning is, um, you know, as artists, like we have to live too. And the whole image of the starving artist, like that's not cool, you know what I mean? Like, if we're artists and we value ourselves and we value our work, there's a reason why our work should be valued poorly, you know? So once you, you know, you really get you got your, your work together and you're developing, you're strong, you're, that's continuous, you gotta start hitting it from like a business angle, thinking about how to be strategic and getting yourself out there, you know, and um, promoting yourself. And a lot of artists that I know, that I work with and what issue that I had, I had too as an artist is it sucks promoting yourself, you know what I mean? And that's another thing too, like for a while, like you'll have to be your own self promoter. And um, of course, ideally as an artist, we don't want to do that stuff. We want like a manager or someone else promoting us because as an artist, you just want to create art all day. But you know, at some point, you probably have to be your own self promoter and it really sucks to feel mad narcissistic and mad self-centered and um, yeah, it sounds really, um, sounds really kind of vain, but you gotta think of it as like, if you're confident in your work and you trust that you're producing something valuable and worthy of the world, then why wouldn't you want to put it out there, you know? And if it's, if it's that, if it's good enough, then the, the world will want to see it, you know? So you want to get over the narcissism and get over feeling like awkward and self-centered or whatever. It's all good, you know, you just have to have trust and faith in your work that it's worthy. And if you're creating something good, people are gonna want to see it. It's only your object. I had the same stack them all. We could do it regardless. Being the modest, but hardest brother in the jungle. What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Sarah Nugent. I'm chilling right now with my boy, J Roth, with Scope Urban Apparel. Check him out at scopeurbanapparel.com. You can right. check out Sarah at ryanthesky.com. Right, ryanthesky.com. Peace. We too hard, man. Yeah. Many more. Dap me, man. What up, man? What OTO, nigga? The perfect fit. You know what I'm saying? Holla at your boy. Uh. I love this shit, man. I do the bangers all day, man. Every day, you know how you get down, man. Prime suspects, man.